Well, welcome back to the channel and I hope you've subscribed because I do need more followers in order to cover my expenses but today we are in St Michael's Church Crewe and a very famous grave which changed the course of history two anchors and it was two brothers that went down in, in the HMS Formidable in 1915 and they were both on the same ship and after that it changed the course of history that uh, two family members couldn't be on the same ship so the whole family are not wiped out so quite historic uh, grave there's some big tombs here, a big double tomb and a lot of the flat tombs and he's going back to 1851 some of the others are underwater and we can't read them because it's been bucketing down with rain but we do find these these double uh, double tombs this one's 1896 There's quite a few of the tombs, but you see they're just totally underwater, you can't read them. There's one there, a gravestone that's uh, probably fell over, which you can't read. There's one or two here, they're barely legible. These are 1847, now oh, this one's 1847, 1889. And we do have two big tombs here, and one in memory of Joseph Seddon Holt, died age 18, 1877. Two fairly big tombs. You just can't uh, read it at all. And a rather old one from 1860. So most of the uh, 1800 graves seem to be in this area. Well, it's always quite a sad place, this, because you can see the state of the uh, place. It's a graveyard, but it's now been taken over by the local council who do sod all, basically. Some like it, some think it's very sort of uh, rustic. All this ivy covering the, the graves, returning to nature, etc. And it's in quite a good state at the moment because uh, obviously nothing's growing but as things start growing the situation will get worse and we've had tons and tons of rain so everything is absolutely uh, soaked to the ground you can see the the puddles and a lot of these graves here are going back 1800s <coughs> Another one there <coughs> covered in ivy, one disappearing under a bush there. So they're all sort of 1800-ish. They're doing well to survive really, but to... And some interesting ones, that's... Uh, Quite an interesting one, quite what happened to that one. It's quite a clean cut on that corner, so why that's uh, gone. 
and we have just missed it because they have the uh, snow drops out and they're just finishing can't quite make this one out but it's a four year four year old two year old can't really make out the uh, the thing but they're all sort of 1870, 1870, 1875, 1878 quite a tragic grave a lighter one 1910 another one 1900s quite a big statement one William Cox of Crewe, 1876. Another one there at Rack and Ruin. It's just a shame that uh, nobody in the UK comes and repairs the damn things. In a lot of places, people will volunteer and go around and fix them that one's got quite an interesting uh, symbol on it 1883 a glove a flower and something else and that one is James Pemberton and there's another grave almost identical over here no a different uh, name but the same symbol on the top there's quite a few uh, old graves in this bottom section most they all tend to be the sort of the same time these 1879 Do have a war grave here, there's quite a lot of war graves in here from the Cheshire Regiment 1917, 1911 behind it. What makes it quite nice here is the dafts and the uh, snowdrops. The snowdrops have gone, but the dafts are, are still hanging on. So it's sort of a common problem where this I use reclaiming you see all the daffodils two graves there and one quite uh, big grave there I'll just have a spin round so you can see the graveyard I mean that tomb there has <laughs> just been sort of eaten by the, uh, the ivy another quite nice <coughs> section at the bottom Another war grave. So there is quite a lot of war graves in here from both wars. That's quite an unusual uh, one, 1926, 1900s. Again, it's just. It's, it's, Lost focus there. There's there's two at the back there that's uh, just been taken over by the uh, the ivy. <coughs> Another one here that the ivy's uh, reclaiming it.
We've still got some snowdrops there. 1800 one. Quite big graves here, 1898. A lot of these are falling over. Two big ones at the back here. It's always the best grave to have one of these because these seem to survive absolutely anything. Can't make out what that says, father something in secret, but uh, these types of graves seem to just last forever. Obviously there's so many graves we can't possibly uh, film them all, so <clears throat> try and find the interesting ones. If we stand at the top here you can see uh, they do go on for sort of forever. This is a notable one. A big old grave this is, and if we can read it, it's JP, which is like a judge. It's a fair old uh, grave. Obviously high status, 1879. Some big tombs close to the church, and they tend to be High status if they're closer to the church, because the nearer they can get to God, the uh, higher the status. Quite unusual big one there. And there's one, two, three, four, four here, which you can't really read. That one's obviously very old. flat ones uh, there's a big flat one here that's uh, there is a sort of a modern graveyard there which is a bit strange because when the graveyard's closed the council take it over so whether the council taking part of it over because it's closed and this is still the church is not very clear one or two sort of outstanding graves here I don't know what this material is but it's uh, 1875 and it's certainly weathered one there falling apart another one you can see that to justice one a bit better from the distance We've got some old big tombs, even some of the old ones are, are falling over. That one there, that is one hell of a piece of stone. Look at the, th the size of it. I can't read what's on it. But I mean, it's about a foot deep and absolutely massive. <clears throat> so maybe with that in the old days and take some doing. Some more <clears throat> high status ones. Again we see one of them that's, uh, that seems to survive well. Three year old there in 1879. 1890, that's a fair old uh, tomb there. Uh, 1866, massive one there with another base. A section of modern graves, but there's a war grave, <coughs> well, a couple of war graves. Well, I hope the family don't mind because this is uh, fantastic whenever you come and I come quite regular 
There's always fresh flowers on this war grave. I believe it's the family members that are still doing it. Private Bailey. And there's another war grave over there. I mean, we do have uh, biker gangs and various other things that put flowers on war graves, but I think these two are actually the family doing it. Royal Navy, HMS Harvester. Beautiful flowers on it. And they do want a bit of attention, these war graves. There's another war grave over there, not to be left out. There's so many to look at, so <clears throat> just pick out the uh, big ones, posh ones, outstanding ones. <laughs> We can't unfortunately uh, do them all. I've got a big one there with the uh, old urn on the top. I've got an angel down here. If you've got an angel, it always stands out, doesn't it? <laughs> That's for a baby, 1905, Jay, Dawn, 12 months old, another one, 7 years old. One or two together, they're quite statement pieces, that's a fair old uh, one. One there, 1911. We saw something like that uh, a bit further down, another one leaning. Some big sort of Celtic cross type of thing. There. Some more war graves here. Interesting one there. <laughs> There's a lot of flowers on it, fresh flowers, so that's 1925. And you come across these when I go around the cemeteries, some you can get from last year and they're just left to wreck and ruin, and you get an odd one where years and years later people are still uh, remembering the people. I'd say two war graves, Lancashire Fusiliers. I think that's about as much as we can cover. That's a fairly big grave there. We're on to sort of 1900s now. There's one that died in infancy, 1918. One or two big ones left here. It's funny, you go to some places and there's angels everywhere. And you go to others and there's like a a couple of angels. Again, we can see a lot of these just being taken over by ivy. And again, you tend to get this. There's a lot from the 1800s. And they're tightly packed, and then all of a sudden, things sort of stop. And then you get some sort of last couple of years but the ivy, I mean there's one there and the ivy's just overtaken it so it's quite interesting when you come because the uh, the squirrels are everywhere and it can be quite entertaining the squirrels <laughs> I think that's as much as we can uh, show you and we hope to catch you on the uh, next graveyard visit there's nothing really sort of outstanding I 
I was just about to go home and this one just caught my eye which is a bit uh, Albert C Cooper 1899 50 years and a young child 12 months just trying to work out why it's supposed to be Christ and obviously something's missing here it's been broken off but presumably there was the two two figures or whether it's the parents but they do have uh, that there is obviously angel wings so we assume uh, there's more meaning to it that's quite an unusual one another couple of quite sort of outstanding their own little way as always if you want to see more don't forget I take the uh, photos for Google Maps and 105 million people have seen my photos on Google Maps so if you search for St Michael's Church crew and go on Google Maps you'll see a lot of uh, still photos and some uh, videos of the uh, war grave so you can possibly see more because obviously still video you can look and read better <laughs>